This video will show you how to remove the DDWRT uh, firmware or software from a Netgear WNR uh, version, sorry, 2000 version 3 router. Um, I'll show you what I got right now. But, okay, so I'm going to go to the router's um, default web page, and you can see here that I have DD uh, WRT installed and running let's go here to status of course it's going to ask me for my username which is admin and password all lowercase I'm um, using the defaults that's what I entered in you enter in what you want and basically you would think you could just hit your firmware upgrade install your old uh, get your old firmware from uh, Netgear and just upgrade it to the old firmware doesn't work that way so uh, let's go get the software you need and uh, I'll show you how to undo uh, the installation of this DDWRT and revert this router back to the original uh, Netgear firmware okay so first place we're gonna go we're gonna have to have um, uh, the proper software first thing we're gonna get is a pro program called TFTP2 so TFT P2 and exe after that. If you're doing a Google search, this will get you right to the page. Okay, and then you'll see the first link here. Reinstall the firmware on the router without the CD uh, recovery tool, setup recovery tool. And it is a Netgear link, so click on this. I will put these links in the description as well. Okay, so here you get uh, a couple of link, uh, links here at the bottom. Download the latest firmware for your router. We're going to have to do that. But first we're going to get the TFTP2 software. And this is the TFTP um, shell that will uh, actually allow you to put this firmware back onto your, to your router. So click on that. And it will open up a new window. Let's uh, scroll down to the bottom of the list. And then you'll see TFTP2. Just click on that. Uh, I'm going to choose, I'm using Internet Explorer and Windows 7, uh, by the way, and this is a 64-bit, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, I believe this works in just about any Windows OS. Uh, click on Save, uh, on the arrow down by Save, and I'm going to click on Save As. I like putting these things all into one uh, common uh, folder. So I'm going to go to the C drive, create a new folder, and let's call it DD. WRT remove. Uh, hit enter to um, get your name in there and then hit enter again to enter the folder. Save. And so that's the first file, the TFTP2 file. That's the first file you need. Uh, we'll close this window out here, close this off. And then we're going to go and get the uh, latest version of the firmware for this router. And we're going to go to support for home. Um, actually, just go up to support here and then go to download center. That's where we need to go. I'm going to use the uh, product drill down. And so scroll down here and then you on the left hand window you have routers modems and gateway go there uh, scroll down to routers and gateway modem wireless routers and gateway modem and then scroll down to WNR 2000 version 3 now that's the version that I'm using so that's what this video applies to so click on that this may work on other Netgear routers, but I don't have other Netgear routers, so we're going with this. Okay, and then you get the uh, documentation over here, but what we want is the firmware. Now, you can choose any one of these firmwares you want, um, but I'm just going to choose the uh, latest one, which is the firmware version 1.1.2.6, and you'll notice it says NA and WW users, and what that means is North American and uh, worldwide users so the firmware version is the same either way 
We're going to click on that. And it says, uh, read the release notes, blah, blah, blah. Just click on download here. Um, then you get a registration page. But if you scroll down to the bottom uh, right, you'll see continue without registering. So click on that. And now you get open, save, and save as. Again, I'm going to click on save as. And it's automatically going into the same uh, directory I put it the uh, original TFTP2 into. Now you'll note that this is a zip file. So we have to extract the bin file from, or the image file from that zip file. So click on save. All right, so now we've gotten all those, uh, uh, both of those files downloaded. These are the two files you need to downgrade this router back to its original. So I'm going to just click on open folder because we've got to take that, uh, open up that zip file. So we're going to open the folder. As you can see, TFTP2 is in that folder. And then we got a zip file. Just double click the zip file and then highlight uh, by left clicking on the uh, image file, WNR 2000 version 3 dash uh, v1.1.2.6 uh, img dot img just right click that click copy go back to your original directory and then then uh, click on the white anywhere then right click on the white part of the screen and click on paste and now you have an image file uh, the image file in the same directory as the tftp uh, file okay so we now have all the software we need to downgrade or to uh, return your router back to the original Netgear software and the latest uh, image that they have available for their firmware. Now close this window, close this window. And at this point, uh, I'm going to show you how to, uh, number one, hardware, uh, sorry, physically set up this router correctly by uh, putting it the network cable directly into the back of the router and um, also how to set the router into its passive TFTP um, boot mode okay make sure you follow those directions carefully after that I'll show you how to uh, put this uh, firmware back into the router and have it all initialized again this is the Netgear WNR 2000 version 3 and I'm going to show you how to place it into a boot mode that allows you to send a firmware package to it through TFTP. Um, on the back you'll notice all the ports and to the uh, right of those ports there you'll see that there's a, a little red dot. Now that's the reset switch. Uh, if you take a screwdriver or a paper clip uh, or any kind of object that fits in there you'll hear that you, you can hear the clicking of the reset switch, okay? Just like that. Um, the, the thing you need to do is place your object in there, hold it down, and while you're holding it down, power up the router, and keep holding that pressure down on that. Then you'll see that the amber light on the power will go on. It'll flash. But eventually it's going to turn green. Okay, once it turns green, you count the number of flashes and, and you count 10 flashes, okay? So I'll start now. It doesn't really matter when you start. And once it flashes 10 times, then you can remove your um, screwdriver or paper clip or whatever you were using and the device will stay in that state. Okay, This router is now ready to accept a, a, a firmware flash through a TFTP uh, file transfer. Okay, So your next step is plug it into your laptop with a uh, network cable and make sure that you do this on the LAN ports, not the WAN port. Otherwise it won't work. Just choose a, any one of the uh, LAN ports and then just plug the other end into your laptop or your computer if you have a computer instead of a laptop. And that's how you set that up. So now that you've got your router 
connected to your computer or to your laptop. Uh, I would also suggest that you've got your laptop plugged into the power supply in the wall, into a wall, not using the battery. You won't want your battery to die in the middle of this. Um, you've got your network cable hooked into your router uh, and it's in the passive TFTP mode. Next thing you need to do is make sure that your network um, configuration is correct. So go, I got my wireless on down here. Um, I don't know what you have for a network, but just right click your network uh, connection down here. Go to open network and sharing center. Then go to change adapter settings. And if you have wireless, disable it. If you don't, don't worry about it. You never want to um, flash a firmware on a router through wireless. That's a dangerous thing. And by disabling the, the wireless network, uh, that makes sure that we're only connected through the local area connection or the cable. Uh, and also at the end of this video, I'll, I'll put these all back to normal again. So uh, right click the local area connection and go to properties. Then go to Internet Protocol version 4, TCP uh, slash IPv4. So double click on that. And if yours is set to the default settings, it'll be on obtain IP address automatically. Obtain DNS server address automatically as well. So choose the use the following IP address and they will both revert to the use the following DNS server address as well. Um, we're going to use 192.168.1.10. Uh, really, you could use anything between 2 and uh, 254 in this uh, slot right here, but just use 10 and you'll be fine. You can't use 1. Click on the next uh, box and it will auto-populate with the correct information for the subnet mask, which is 255-255-2550. Uh, you can put a default gateway in, but you don't have to. We'll do it anyway, um, just for kicks. And the default gateway is the same IP address as your router, which is 192.168.1.1. And that's the same on the DNS um, if you wish to put it in. You don't really need to, but what the heck. Okay. And then click on OK. OK again. And now you've got a, a hard set IP address on your network card, which is or network adapter, which is what you need to do this correctly. So we're going to close this window off. Uh, we're going to go down to uh, my folders here, go to the C drive and uh, DDWRT remove folder, open up my TFTP2, click on run, and mine's already populated, but it, the, the IP address is the same, it's the same as a router, 192.168.1.1. Uh, you don't need a password, so leave that blank. Here, I'm going to remove this information so that uh, I can show you how to get the information in there correctly. Click on this box next to it. And uh, then we're going to go to the C drive. And down to DDWRT remove. And then we're going to choose the image file that we want right here. And click open. Next, we click on upgrade. And you should get that blue progress bar. If, if you don't get that blue progress bar, you probably haven't done one of the steps correctly. Just uh, check again. And make sure you set everything up correctly. Uh, obviously, I was successful here. So, you know, my router has now been reverted back. Uh, it takes a while for this router to reboot. Uh, so, um, right now, I have uh, an amber light on my internet uh, indicator and it's blinking and I have a, a green light on my port um, number three which is where my cable is plugged into it all depends on what you've got I'm gonna do this real time so you understand how long this takes for this router to actually reinitialize itself now I have an amber light on my power a blinking amber light on my internet and my port light is uh, flashing green so I'll just wait here I'm going to open up the browser because we're going to go to the uh, browser to browse the uh, default web page here once it's done. Uh, you no longer need this if you're if it's act your TFTP2 program if you've successfully done it. So just click close on that. Uh, I got an amber light on the power light, a amber light on the internet light, and uh, they're they're solid. And the same as on on the port. Now I got a uh, port green port light that's solid as well. 
So the router is still initializing. So just uh, so you get an idea. Uh, now I have a green light on the internet uh, light. It's solid and a green light on my port solid and an amber light on my power light. So the, the router is almost done initializing at this point. I think a lot of people when they're doing these uh, firmware upgrades don't give the router enough time to initialize and they panic and just start doing crazy things with the router. All right, so now I have a solid green power light, a solid green internet light, a blue wireless light, a uh, solid port light, and a WPS light is back on again on the WPS switch. So at this point, the router is initialized. I'd go to it, 192.168.1.1 in the address bar. And you will get this page, uh, which is uh, basically the um, default uh, uh, password and uh, you, sorry, the SS. This is a default page you get when you turn on your router first out of your out of the box, which means you've been successful. Okay, um, you can go through this stuff or hit print or whatever. Um, you know, here's your SSID, Netgear seventy three, and the uh, password wireless password so um, let me just click on this for yeah it doesn't go anywhere so next uh, just to take this page out of here go back to 192.168.1.1 and you have to actually go to it two times to, to get there all the way through um, you know you get get through all this. Uh, I guess we go try here. Go to Neck Your Genie. All right. That's this is just you know again, one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. So obviously you have to go uh, jump through their hoops a couple of times. Okay. So here the the password should be the default Neck Your pass uh, username and password. The password is uh, sorry. The username is admin. The password is password all lowercase. Hit OK. And as you can see, we're back into the router. WNR 2000, like your genie, router firmware, version 1.1.26. Uh, so you're basically hooked up uh, correctly, and your router's on, my router's on the internet, and uh, everything's green and running great. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is revert your network settings back to what they used to be. So go to the lower right here. Right click on your network icon, open network and sharing center, change adapter settings, uh, enable your wireless now. Go back here to local area connection and properties and internet protocol version 4 TCP IP. So double click that and let's revert this back to the way it was, which is obtained automatically. So Click on those two radio buttons, get it back to, to uh, automatic. Okay, okay, close, and go back to this router. And just to, to make sure we're still connected to it here, we'll go to advanced. And as you can see, it's working just fine. All right, that's how you uh, revert your router back to the Netgear Genie firmware that originally came with it uh, if you didn't like your ddwrt or you wanted to get out from ddwrt so thank you very much for watching and have a great day